Hi everybody, welcome back to Mentor, yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're all doing fantastic. So, today on the podcast we're going to be talking about diversions. What is a diversion? Why would you ever divert? And uh, how are you supposed to deal with it? So, um, I've been having some questions about this. Um, mainly from people who have been diverted, sitting in the back, and they don't really understand what's going on, and why the pilots are choosing to do this. So. To put things easy, uh, a diversion is when the flight crew decide not to land at your destination, but to go to one of their planned or unplanned alternates. Uh, on the planning stage, we are always checking out all the weather conditions, no times and everything at the destination that we're planning to go to, but also at one or more predetermined alternate airports. And the reason we do this is that as a pilot, you will never just commit yourself to something without having a backup plan. Um, those backup plans are crucial to keep the stress level down in case something would happen. And what I mean by something would happen would be most of the time it's weather related. So it might be a lot of fog or a lot of thunderstorms over the destination airport when you get there. In that case, you, you would probably have a little bit of alternate or a little bit of holding fuel in order to wait for a number of minutes, depending on you know what the weather was when you de departed, you might have more or less holding fuel. But after a while, if the conditions are not getting better, you are going to have to do something because you cannot stay up there forever. You have to go and land somewhere. And if you can't land at your destination, you have to go and land at your alternate. Right. In the flight planning stage, we have taken fuel to make sure that we can fly to our destination, that we can do a go around and that we can fly all the way to our alternate, the furthest alternate if we need more than one. And at that point we can go in and land and on top of that we need another 30 minutes, which is our final reserve fuel. So how do we actually do this? Well, um, there are two things that can happen. Either you can have an, um, a diversion which are kind of expected. That would happen if the weather is really poor, as in below landing minima, so when we depart towards the destination, it might be really foggy, for example. In th this case, you would probably, as a crew, be discussing how to do the diversion already when you're in the cruise stage. So. You'll be sitting there, coming in and saying, right, okay, if we go in, we look what the weather is like, we try to do an approach, providing that the weather has improved so that we are legal to do the approach. But if we're not, then we can think about going to our uh, alternate, we'll see how much fuel we need. And in most cases, the company would have predetermined a couple of different alternates, which from a commercial point of view would be the most favorable. That will include you know, an alternate that might be very close by, so that the um, passengers can be bussed to their original destination. Or it might be a company destination, which have a lot of good backup from an operational point of view, so good dispatchers, good um, handling companies, things like that. But anyway, if you have a lot of time, it means that you, during your cruise, can sit and you can discuss with your first officer or with your captain which one of these alternates that you want to go to, you can also take weather for both your destination and your alternate so that you have uh, a view of what kind of um, approach aids are available at your alternate, things like that. So what I want to get to here is that the more time you have to prepare, the more likely it is that you will have a successful outcome. And what I've felt is that the more you prepare um, to divert, uh, the more sure it can be that you're actually going to land. But it doesn't really matter because you will never have spoiled the time that you spent planning for a alternate or for a diversion to an alternate is is going to be very a uh, time very well used the one time out of 10 that you actually have to divert because it will feel just like a continuation of the flight right so that's the, the one that's the first bit the second one is an unexpected diversion unexpected diversion tends to be way worse and the reason for that is that a, you probably haven't carried much extra fuel, so you probably don't have much uh, holding fuel available, so you need to take a decision much quicker. B, since you haven't made a plan, you now have to make up the plan at the point of decision to divert. So there's much more things like taking weather, like informing cabin crew, things like that, that needs to be taken in a much shorter period of time. This does not mean that you need to rush but it does mean that your workload is going to shoot up, which is why planning is crucial. So there are things that you cannot plan for. 
you know, there might be an aircraft ahead of you that lands and uh, the landing gear collapses and they're left on the runway and the runway is now closed so you have to divert. But most, in most cases, there, there, is, um, there is some point. For example, with um, uh, thunderstorms, there will be, in most cases, a forecast of thunderstorms around and whenever there is, there should be in the back of your head that there is a possibility that that one thunderstorm can be sitting straight on top of, an air, of the airport when you get there and not move. So, a couple of things that you need to do in case you divert. Now, there are what I would say a successful diversion. A successful diversion is when all of the people involved in the diversion are well informed, they know what's going on. And what people is that? Well, it's your colleague, obviously, the other pilot. It's the cabin crew. The cabin crew will want to know where they are about to land. It's the passengers, because the passengers, to keep the passengers happy, and this is something that I consider, uh, if, I, if, if I'm looking at the diversion as a, a, a successful one, it's where the passengers not necessarily are happy, because they very rarely are when they divert, but that they're well informed and that they're not confused of where they are, things like that. So, pilot, cabin crew, passengers, and air traffic control, and also your company. So there's quite a lot of people that needs to be informed about your diversion, and the diversion is very quick. So in these circumstances, in my company, for example, we do something when the weather is um, at a low, you know, not below minima, but close to the minima, we do something called a monitored approach. This means that the first officer will be flying, uh, briefing and flying the approach, but the captain will be flying the landing, and in case they don't land, the go-around will also be flown by the first officer. The reason for this are multiple. One of them is that the captain has a bigger overview, so they can monitor the situation, that's the name, uh, to see if there's anything that's going outside the limits. But the other thing which really helps well is that in this case, first officer is more than capable to fly a competent approach. However, the captain is likely to be the one who is going to be communicating with all of these people that I've just been mentioning. And that's better made when he or she is a pilot monitoring because then the pilot flying can concentrate on flying and to some extent contact and talk to ATC, while the pilot monitoring can talk to the cabin, make PAs, things like this, and also go on the second radio box and talk to the company. So this is what tends to happen. We tend to go into holding, wait for the weather to improve, and while we're doing this, we're talking to each other about, right, so what fuel and what fuel should we divert? We discuss that, decide on it, and when you're getting closer to that, I'll be talking to the cabin crew, telling them that, right, we, the weather has not improved. It's very likely that we're now going to divert to X, Y, Z, uh, and I'm going to make a PA. Once we have decided, not before, but once we have decided, I will then make a PA to the passenger, telling them that the weather has not improved. The weather is below our safe minimum to land. So at this point, we're not able to do an approach and we are going to now proceed to whatever airport we're going to. I want you to sit back. I want you to listen to my cabin crew's instruction. And as soon as we get down to the ground, I am going to be in contact with our company to tell you about your ongoing journey. And by doing so, you will accomplish a couple of things. You will keep the passengers in the loop so they will know what's going on. You will also, by the way that you're making the PA in a nice, calm manner, project that you have a plan. So they will not think so much about not landing where they're going to. They think that now they're going to be taken care of. So you go, tell air traffic control where you're going. They will proceed vectors, so give you direct to a waypoint of whatever they are doing as part of your, of your um, maybe your misapproach or your diversion. And while you're doing this now, as you're diverting, if you have time, then you can also contact your company. You might have it via ACAR, so you might have it via company frequency. The way you do that, you call up the company and you tell them that we now have to divert. And depending on if you've already decided where you're going, I recommend that. I recommend to tell the company that you are diverting to a specific place because otherwise you give uh, the company the feeling or the possibility that they could choose where you're going and if you are already on the way and your fuel is getting low it's probably better just to stick to the plan you have so contact the company if you have a lot of fuel if you're sitting in a holding you can contact the company and ask them where they would like you to go but if you're already in the diversion process it's probably better just to tell them that we have now due to the weather, elected to divert to this place. 
Uh, can you start to arrange for buses or arrange for a plan? Maybe you're just going to go down, land, upload more fuel, wait for the weather to improve and fly back. Or you might be offloading the passengers and they might be bussed to the destination. But this is going to be up to the company. You now have to just focus on flying safely to your uh, new destination, your alternate. And going there is not very, I mean, it's it, from an operational point of view, it's just like flying to your original destination. It's just that it's a different airport, maybe different procedures. As always, make sure you take your time to set up, brief properly, don't stress. Um, make sure you know where you're going, as in terms of taxiways and maybe specific procedures at the destination or the alternate you're going to. But that's essentially it. That's the way... That's the way you do a diversion, and a successful diversion is going to include all of these people being well informed in a nice way, okay, in a nice and calm way. And the trick to being calm is to have prepared for it mentally. The trick to prepare for it mentally is to be well aware of the threat of a possible diversion at an early stage, if it's possible. Guys, I hope that uh, that explains a little bit about diversions. Um, as always, ask me questions, send them in here. And um, for the next time, I hope that you're all doing fantastic. And I will see you in my next podcast. Bye-bye.